Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Well, hello. My name's Matt, and I'm going to be one of your co-hosts for the day, and this is Rachel. Greetings. And this is a nice little podcast called The Coolest Stuff on the Planet. Today we're going to take a little virtual tour of um, some of the winter wildlife that Japan has to offer. Japan, and particularly Hokkaido, is probably one of the snowiest places on Earth, so we're talking intense winter. Mm -hmm. And so every winter, this little island witnesses some really amazing gatherings of birds. We are going to talk about the red-crowned cranes of Hokkaido. You might also know them as Japanese or Manchurian cranes. And they're famous for their striking coloring and interesting courtship behavior. Now, in Japan, these birds are known as tancho. So red-crowned cranes are typically uh, migratory birds that you'll find in China, Russia, Korea, and Japan. But there is a resident population in um, Hokkaido. And that's the one we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Now, as you might have guessed, red-crowned cranes get their name from the patch of red on their heads that you can see right here. Here's a strange part about this. If you look closely, the patch isn't made of colored feathers. Um, there's no pigmentation there from the feathers. It's actually exposed skin. And when they get agitated or excited, it, uh, it the skin turns red up there. Kind of like the snow monkeys, remember? The red yes. faces. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. must be similar. Or maybe your Uncle Jim. <laughs> I do have an Uncle Jim. You take that back. Okay. <laughs> so these cranes are considered a national symbol of Japan. And if you've ever done any origami, which I bet you have, Matt, I have. Oh, tons. And you've ever folded any paper cranes, this is the crane that they were modeled on. Wow. So they feature prominently in Japanese art and mythology. And poetry. Yep. They're considered symbols of fidelity and longevity, not only because they mate for life, but because according to folklore, they can live a thousand years. Not at all surprisingly, these traits have made them a popular motif in Japanese weddings. Mm -hmm. And they're also supposed to be lucky. Um, so supposedly, the story goes, if you fold a thousand of these cranes, a crane will grant you a wish. Now, as we said, these cranes mate for life, and they have an interesting mating ritual. Very interesting. To get to that point. Yeah. As a part of their courtship, they do a little dance. So they bow to one another, and then... I love that part. How yeah. very Japanese, even the birds bow. Clearly out of respect. Nice. Uh, and then they, they dance by jumping into the air with their little legs flopping around, and they do one little flap of their wings, and then they float back to the ground. Yeah, it's amazing to see if you watch this here. It's just it's just spellbinding to watch it. Mm -hmm. Another little neat fact about this dance um, that I thought was really cool is that in the height of this sort of dancing frenzy, they'll sometimes even um, pick up sticks and grass and leaves with their beaks, toss them in the air, and then kind of when they come back down, sort of peck at them and stab at them. Wow, like skeet shooting. For birds. <laughs> With their beaks, yeah. <laughs> oh, they also do something. They're also famous for, um, as a part of this dance, they make calls together. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a crane duet. Nice. So the female makes a call and the male makes a call. They stick their beaks up in the air. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the way they contort their necks here. Look at this picture. This is this is incredible. They their necks go down and then back up and then they they <laughs> make the crazy noise. <laughs> it's it's cool. pretty cool. You can spot these striking birds in several different places on Hokkaido, uh, from national parks to sanctuaries to privately owned farms. In the winter, the birds are fed at the public and private uh, feeding stations. So the origins of this tradition of feeding the birds started in the 50s, because in the 20th century, the birds were overhunted almost to the point of extinction. And so in the 50s, they started feeding them, and that sort of helped the population to rebound a little bit. Um, there's still some con conservation issues Today, there are slightly more than a thousand of them in Hokkaido. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end. I do apologize that it is the end because I know you want more. If you want to learn more, though, you can go to our website, HowStuffWorks.com. Do a little search -a -roo for cranes, Japan, Hokkaido, any of that stuff, and you will find it. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.